Hello people of YouTube, my name is Mike Myers. Some of you may know me as Mikey Cal. Today we're going to be playing around th with this program called Blender. It's a 3D rendering program, but we're going to be using it for video editing instead today. Now, a lot of people didn't realize that you could actually use this program for video editing, but it's actually a pretty good option. And the thing that I like about it the most is that it works pretty much the same. Actually, it works exactly the same on every major platform, whether you're using Linux, like I am, Windows 7, like I sometimes do, or on a Mac, like I sometimes, but rarely do. Anyway, uh, let's, let's get started by actually configuring this thing, because if I'm going to be using this for doing YouTube videos, it would be nice if I can come into it and it would be already laid out correctly for me. So. What are we going to do? We're going to have to configure some of the startup settings. So first things first, let's go over here and let's hit the escape button so we can get rid of this little message in the front. Now we're going to be doing video editing, so I'm, why am I looking at this 3D box? Well, that's because I'm actually in the 3D default mode. I need to switch it to the video sequencing mode. Oh, and that's really, really hard to do. Oh, wait a second, I could just click on this up here, and I could go down to video editing. Ah, there we go. Now we're pretty much ready to go. Well, not really. It's not really set to my personal preferences. But let me just show you around so you can see what each of these p panes are actually all about. This one over here, this big black area, is where our video is going to be previewed. This section over here is the curve graph. We're going to ignore this section. This section is very important because this is our timeline. This is where we're going to lay our video and we're going to edit it. This down here is another way to actually control the timeline. I'm using my left mouse button and clicking on it. I can do that up here too. I don't think we really need this. So I'm going to actually use my left mouse button. I'm going to pull it down and it disappears. And we're going to take this and we're going to pull it over. And you know what? I don't really need to have the graph editor right now. There's going to be some, uh, there's going to be some things that we're going to do in the future that that will be useful. But for today, I'm just going to turn it to a properties pane instead. Meaning, I'm going to actually click on this little button down here, which controls this pane, and we're going to go to properties. Now, we, this actually is where all of the settings for the video that we're going to create are configured. So it's probably more useful to have that up in the corner than having the graph up in the corner. Though we are going to be able to actually configure this and save it to a default. That's what we're really trying to do today. So I am generally dealing in 720p video. I'm not doing 1920 by 1080, 1080p video. So the cool thing about this program is it has rendered presets. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go down to HDTV 720p. Look at that, that's pretty easy. Let's click on it, and it automatically configures our X and Y resolution, which is 1280 by 720. This over here uh, is actually the range of our video. How many frames is our video going to have that is going to be output? By default, it's 1 to 250, but you know what? You can change this on the fly just by going down here and, and increasing this number, or decreasing it. Right now, we're just going to leave it at uh, whatever it is, 260, that's fine. We're going to go down here and we're going to change some other settings that are going to be useful. First of all, we need to actually configure our temp directory. This is actually not a temp directory. It's actually the output directory. I don't know why they put it in temp by default. But we're going to click on this right here so that it brings up our file browser. And we're going to select a place that we actually can find this video on a regular basis. I'm going to put it in my desktop. You know what? Actually, I'm going to put it in, I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm going to put it in my video folder. But put it anywhere that you like. And I have an output video folder in my uh, home directory. So I'm going to select that up here, accept. And now, whenever we actually do uh, a video output file, it's going to appear in that folder. One other thing that I actually forgot to do, which I, I overlooked, is our frame rate. 
it's very important that this be configured before you start dropping any video onto your timeline. You need to make sure that you know what the frame rate of your video is and what the resolution of your video is before you drop it on. So I'm actually dealing in video that already is in 720p resolution and I'm downloading it a lot of times from Google, from YouTube, because they, they, they have an MPEG-4 download function, and it's usually uh, encoded in 30 frames per second, at 30 frames per second. So this is a good default setting for me. But if you're dealing in a different uh, frame rate, then you're going to want to configure that here. And make, just make sure that before you actually dro drop your video or add your video to the timeline that it's set to the correct frame rate. I think it will mess it up if you do it uh, afterwards. Okay, so we did actually change our output folder. Here it is. Uh, that's correct. And we're going to be outputting this to a... We can output it to any of these movie file types. But XFIT is the best default. It tends to just work. So we're going to actually use that for now. I mean, uh, you're, a lot of you are going to want to actually encode it to H.264. And that works... From, from my testing, it, it seems to work pretty well. But I have heard people have had some issues with it. I don't know if it is more dependent on the actual capabilities of your processor or your uh, video configuration. I don't know. But I've heard people say that XFIT is the, uh, the configuration that seems to work the best or it's the most dependable. So we're just going to do it for now. We're going to set it up that way just so you can test it yourself. And we're going to go to the encoding setting below that and we're going to set the preset to XFIT again. Again, switch it uh, to your liking afterwards, but just try it. Now, it's very important that we also configure our audio. We also want to have audio with our video um, encoded. I'm going to encode it to MP3. And we don't need it to be a bitrate of 192. I don't need it to be a bitrate of 192, but you can set it to whatever you like. I'm going to set mine to 128. That's probably even overkill for just doing voice, which is what I'm mostly doing with these videos, is narrating and showing you around. Um, that should do it. That's all you really need to actually have your config everything configured. Now, what do we want to do? We want to save this as our default startup file. Great. All you have to do is go to File, Save, Startup File. And what will happen is after I do this, every time that I close Blender, and reopen it, it will already have it pre-configured to this configuration. Now, other things that you might want to put on by default in your, in your default startup file is you might al also want to turn on AV Sync. Down here you can actually turn it on, your, on and off with a checkbox. You can see it disappeared. But you want to turn AV Sync on and you also want to turn on audio scrubbing. And what that does is when you have audio scrubbing on, I can actually be dragging my timeline and it will actually play audio as I'm going over the video. So it can give you a real, a real good sample of what it's going to, the final product is going to look like. So let's just save that to our default by going to File, Save Startup File. And now this will be our default configuration. And I think that should do it for this tutorial. And I'll let you go. We'll move on to the next one.